Okay, hello everyone. I'm here this morning to chat to Barbara Rao at the International Committee of the Red Cross. Morning, Barbara. Good morning, Rachel. Hi, thanks for chatting to us today. So this is the very start of our course, of your course, Managing Children with Cerebral Palsy. So we just wanted to have a little chat to you today about, um, about the course and what participants can expect from the course coming up. So um, you're the physical physiotherapy lead at the International Committee of the Red Cross, is that correct? Yes, exactly. I'm the physiotherapy referent at the ICRC and I also have, first of all, I'm a physiotherapist, trained physiotherapist in Switzerland and um, I'm also giving a support uh, for the PRP managers uh, in eight countries where ICRC works, mainly in the Middle East. Good. Um, and so we're running this, you're running this, um, we're running together this, this course on managing children with cerebral palsy. So um, let's can you just give us a little bit of explanation on the need for this sort of course and why you decided to run this course? So, there are actually many reasons. Um, maybe first of all, one reason is that I'm also a mother and um, I think children believe to have, I mean, we, we need to give children the best quality of life. I mean, they are our future. Um, so th that's one reason. Uh, the second reason is that I used to I used to be a um, neurophysiotherapy or neuro rehabilitation physiotherapist, uh, specialized in um, Bobat, and um, and I care uh, for this domain. I love this domain. I'm not practicing for years. But I also see that um, in the, in the, when, the, when I go to missions to, to some countries, that the management of children with cerebral palsy, which is proposed, offered to the parents and to the children, is not right what I would like to see or what I did or what I was teaching when I did some courses uh, on that subject. Um, there is a big room for improvement. We are far, often far from evidence-based practice. And seriously, I mean, sometimes I see parents walking for hours to get treatment and what the, the treatment they get is sometimes passive range of motion. So this really upsets me a lot because I knew they, the physiotherapist can do other things and uh, can offer the parents uh, more than actually what they offer. And uh, so I thought for since years that we definitely have uh, the ICRC has to to be more involved in that field and that we could do a course. Um, we also, uh, as a mother, you know, when I come to physiotherapy rooms and I see and hear like 10 or more children crying during physiotherapy treatment, I just think that we need to do um, more. It, I don't mean that they all cry in all the contexts where we are working or with a, which I have the chance to visit, but sometimes they do and uh, that's why we wanted to run that course. So with the course it sounds like we're hoping to um, um, provide a, a level of knowledge with the course that we can um, in, um, help children around the world to improve their quality of life with the sort of globalizing the treatment that we're giving across the world. Is that the sort of aim of this course? Yeah, that's an excellent summary. Listen, I think before getting into specialized treatment, specialized rehabilitation techniques, etc., which I think are very important and useful, I think we first of all uh, give bring the, the messages and the main messages and the main basics, knowledge and maybe basic competence and, and say, listen, this is the minimum what you should do or what we would advise you to do. And then if you are specialized, uh, if you want to specialize or if you want to dig into that subject further, you can go uh, to that and that direction, etc. But I mean, messages like cerebral, cerebral palsy is not an illness, doesn't need drugs or maybe it does, but not like antibiotics or uh, cerebral palsy cannot be cured. I mean, these are messages we, we need to pass through and make sure that all around the world, wherever you live, uh, children and parents are informed that there are ways of getting better, but it's maybe not the ways they were, they were um, having. Or, yeah. yeah, so I think one of the main 
um, activities as part of this course or outcomes of this course that we'd both like to see, I think, is that, that there's knowledge sharing through the course. Because I think um, there's a variety, people have a variety of levels of knowledge around the world. Um, and it would be really good if everyone on the course um, can share their knowledge. So even if, even if, if people are finding, um, you know, the course will be challenging, there's a lot of work to get through. Um, a lot of people will just learn a lot of new things on the course but there will also be some people who have quite a lot of knowledge already and are participating in the course and what we'd really like to see is those people sharing their knowledge with other others as well because I think that we can learn more from um, each other than we can just by making you read things so I think the discussion forums will be really important um, for people to get involved in to share knowledge um, so on this course we don't expect you to just be a learner we expect you to be a teacher as well which is is how we can all really learn um, so have you got any other advice for the participants as we enter into this course yeah I really would like to emphasize that it's, this is a very important point because uh, in countries where uh, communication means internet are not so widely used or spread or where it's very expensive etc people have less chances to communicate with other people who have uh, where communication Twitter and Facebook is very easy to use so that's really a chance to bring all these people together and say okay this is my experience this is my experience and take and, and share this experience because even in countries where resources are very poor, people have lots of other resources and questions, but also advice uh, to give. And that's really um, an excellent point, an excellent opportunity. I know, for example, that um, some physiotherapists in Burundi um, are going to participate and uh, it's their first time to participate or maybe um, the second time to participate in an English speaking uh, group forum and they are very excited and I would like to welcome everybody I mean the most experienced and the less experienced to share and to, to discuss because that makes the course really being rich. My advice um, especially to people who are not used to, to um, to, to do online courses. It's not an easy way of, uh, of getting knowledge, etc. It's very new, it's very different from having a course where you have a teacher who tells you the truth, basically, or what he thinks the truth is, because you have to be active. But you have also to really think and reflect about what is your own objective before the course, because you won't be, you will not be able to, to, to spend hours and hours, and you will uh, finally get lost. So think about your objective, your personal objective, and respect also the four hours we recommend, because we don't want you to be completely exhausted after the second week and be and hating to do this course. I really would like you to experience the fun of, of uh, being an active learner and an active communicator with the rest of the of the world and and take this course as a new experience and really as an experience it was for me huh, when we did the, we run the amputee rehabilitation course it was for me um, and I hope it will be for, for all of you I think that's really good advice. Um, I think to try and keep it fun, don't get overwhelmed by everything. There's, there's a lot of additional reading that's optional, so not to get it overwhelmed by all of that. And just try and, and stay within it, four to six hours each week, we, depending on learning, um, learning uh, how you learn and things like that and, how, and what your objectives are. So, And I think setting your own personal learning objectives is a really good idea as well at the beginning of the course. So, Barbara... Um, I just want to say thank you very much for making this course available for everybody and for supporting this course. Um, it's going to be a great six weeks um, and I'm looking forward to it. So you and I will both be around in the discussion forums and around chatting and behind the scenes. So is there any other final messages that you have for everyone before they get stuck in? Well, first of you, thank you, Rachel. Huh? You're, uh, you did a great job as usual with Physiopedia. No, I mean... Uh, <laughs> Just be active and use the opportunity uh, to experience something different. This is what I, I... And also, maybe another point is think about one child you were treating 
because that was a comment of, of one participant for the amputee course. They were saying, okay, when I had my patient, I looked at him different or my service user. Or, so think about one child you have seen or you are seeing or one parent, etc. And think, okay, for this child, thanks to the course, what can I do different? One point. And if you do one thing different, or uh, if you try, there's one more chance of bringing um, something new, a new experience also to this child and maybe a better quality of life. Perfect. Good. All right. So um, we are both welcoming everyone to the course. Good luck with the course. We'll be around and really nice to chat to you. Thank you, Barbara. Thanks, Rachel. Have a nice day. Yeah? Bye.